<laughs> I found a new spot. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, I've been analysing this Friday evening yeah, and by Stone and Lord Ramat. My journal for since I first came to Stafford, which is a, just over a year ago, but more particularly since Christmas, where I spent at the fancy hotel in town, the Swan, etc., and the Premier Lodge, and the Premier Inn, and Travel Lodge rather than Premier Inn, and so on, I, when I still had money, and then so on. And why there is the trouble here now, all this trouble with me and the police and all this stuff. And basically, I was not in Stafford at all. Right through, I hit to Scotland, well, half, three, four times. So I'd sign on a Thursday and then boof, out of the area. Whereas I then found that camp south of Stafford having to walk through the Rising Brook area, enjoying the walk, loving the camp in a sense because it was like my place really and relatively safe and so on in terms of the people aren't going to pick me up after five days of hitching when I first started there <coughs> and they're not going to bother looking in and doing anything right so this is where the trouble starts and it's barely a month later that the kids start using my head as a goalpost so the peace I felt in Stafford at Christmas still remains, St. Bertolin still remains because there, were n there was no one there then. That's the point. This is the point. I'm trying to work out why it's, it seems so bad now. And it's because I'm around and it's because there is a vicious spirit amongst the scrotes of Stafford. They basically roll in from out of town, no doubt, into the centre of that town and terrorise anyone who isn't a Staffy. That's it. Now I've got it. I've got a document. It's on film. But I've, I've worked out the timing of the thing. Why is it that it seems to be... Anyway, that's the way it is. So I've, I've, the penny has dropped in terms of understanding what's gone on. It's all been an absolute nightmare since back May, June, when I first, although I was signing on in Stafford back in January, I basically go and sign on and then immediately hitch off. Or I was staying up in Stone at the bed and breakfast and then by the canal and so on. So I had no, I wasn't staying, I was never kind of hanging about the evening or walking out and walking through the blasted rising brook and so on until uh, May, Tuesday the 26th and then that's when it kicked in because then they could see me and basically they can't help themselves they've got to have a, you know, they've got to attack these little staffies the staffature scropes Stafford scrotes. Stafford scrotes. So now the penny's dropped. Okay, now I can see why it is. It's my fault for existing, but all around the world I've travelled. All around the world. All over the show. But of course I've always had a hotel room in, in Canberra and Australia curfew was from sundown to sun up. No way would I wander around dressed like this with a bunch, you know, a bunch of bunch of drunken Australians. Oh, the hell. Oh, what you wear under there then? I mean, yes. So I never put myself in the position of being uh, physically assaulted because I just I had the money. So no doubt I would have had trouble in Canberra and probably other places too. I've always had money and therefore been off the streets. So it isn't necessarily just Stafford. may well be out there, but I've never been in the same circumstances. So it's the combination of the two, Stafford and me on the streets in the evening, or no afternoon even, quite frankly, but with no money. So now I understand. Thank heaven for that. Good, 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 good. <gasps> what do I do? I love you, my Lord, with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength.